it's Jen Maleka, the Holistic Health Boss, your functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and expert. And this week I'm coming to you guys from the kitchen as we talk about the link between Teflon, your thyroid, and birds. And why this might seem like a really strange combination, they actually have something really important in common that I want to tell you guys about this week. So, you know, I'm a huge fan of technology. I have to hand it to what we've been able to do with technology over the years. I mean, now we can make prosthetic legs to help people walk where they never could before. We have smartphones that can secure our home or give us information in just a single touch. It's actually really amazing what technology has done for us. But we don't think about is how the advancements of technology and the conveniences that we live in might be wreaking havoc on our health. So take Teflon for example. Teflon was introduced in 1945 and it's a seemingly amazing invention, right? No more um, crusted pots, pans, or cookie sheets to be scrubbing. It has made our life easier. It's reduced the amount of time and energy that we have to spend cleaning dishes and cleaning ovens and doing things in the kitchen. However, what we don't talk about is what is Teflon actually doing to our health overall. So Teflon is a type of PFC, which is a polyfluorochemical, and PFCs can be found in all types of things, such as nonstick cookware, as well as in a lot of our common to-go containers that we get from food establishments. Um, just for example, with Starbucks, in their containers, 76% of them contain PFCs. At um, Chipotle, they have 65% of their containers contain PFCs. At Panera, 46%. And among just local restaurants in general, there are 46% um, that contain PFCs. Now, the scary part is that these PFCs have been linked to things such as abnormal thyroid hormones, pregnancy, hypertension, and preeclampsia, cholesterol, obesity, as well as kidney and prostate cancer. So veterinarians who specialize in birds have actually known about the dangers for Teflon for decades now. Actually back in 1986, there was a phenomenon that occurred or something known as Teflon toxicosis, where hundreds of bird deaths were linked to the fact of um, their being exposed to Teflon fumes and particles in the kitchen when Teflon cookware was being used. Now birds might be a small example in comparison to humans about how Teflon can impact um, a living creature, but we certainly have to ask the question, if that's what Teflon is doing to birds or PFCs, what does it do to humans? So when it comes to PFCs and Teflon, the biggest um, thing that's, that it is impacting is actually your thyroid. So PFC, PFCs or Teflon have been shown to actually uh, um, to compete with binding proteins and binding components and resources for thyroid hormones. So they actually compete with binding resources for T4 specifically. And free T4 is then converted into free T3. So when you have this exposure to Teflon, especially on a regular basis or these PFCs in your environment, then that is impacting the availability or production of free T4 in your body that is then converted into free T3. So if you're um, suffering from hormone imbalances, then certainly minimizing or eliminating Teflon and PFCs out of your environment can have a huge impact to improving your thyroid health. Now your thyroid is not the only thing that takes a hit. Your liver also does too. So PFCs or Teflon have been shown to act like fatty acids in the body. They have the same type of structure, the same characteristics. So what happens here is that they will bind to different types of proteins that affect your liver as well as some of your other hormones like sex hormone binding globulin as well as corticosteroid binding globulin. And this overall disrupts the function of your endocrine system. So this can have your a huge impact on your overall health as your endocrine system is basically in charge of running your entire body. So these PFCs and Teflon you can see can really become a problem. Now it's probably not realistic for you to go home and toss all of your nonstick cookware and replace it with new things or to never eat out of a to-go container. So there's sim simple things that you can start doing on a daily basis just to reduce your exposure to PFCs in general. 
So like I mentioned before, we all love Starbucks, right? Probably all of us that are watching this video or on my email list or gonna see this at some point in time have gone to Starbucks, not once, but probably hundreds of times. And like I mentioned in Starbucks products, 76% of their food packaging products contained PFCs or that Teflon, Teflon type of material. So what you can do, one of my favorite things to do is actually to bring my own coffee mug with me when I go to get coffee at Starbucks or somewhere else. My favorite coffee mug is by Healthy Human. Um, you can actually get this on Amazon and I provide the links here in the blog or in the email for you where you can go and grab this cheap little cup. It's great, it's BPA free and toxic free, so bring this with you when you go to get coffee. Um, I travel with this too, I take it all over the world with me. It's just really helpful to help reduce any of those PFCs that you might be getting into Go Cups. Now, another thing that you can do that's really simple is that you can line your cooking sheets. So whenever you're baking or cooking, you can line your cookie sheets with um, parchment paper. So parchment paper is fairly inexpensive. It kind of has a waxy texture to it and it will provide a protective layer between the nonstick cookie sheet or baking sheet that you have and your food so that that's not getting absorbed into your food. And then lastly, what you can start to do over time is you can replace some of your cookware. So my favorite is cast iron pots and pans. You can also go with stainless steel. Um, I provide you guys with a link here in the blog too and in the email for my favorite cast iron brand. So you can hop on Amazon and start to replace some of these things as well over time. Again, it's not something that you have to do overnight. But making these small little shifts can start to have a really huge impact on your thyroid, your liver, and your overall health. So if you guys are interested in learning more about toxins, how they impact your thyroid, your adrenal, your gut health, and just your overall health in general, I wanna invite you to join me in a free online workshop coming up on March 2nd called The Truth About Toxins and How to Detox Them. It's gonna be happening March 2nd, like I said, um, from 6 p.m. Pacific time, and that's 9 p.m. Eastern time. It'll last maybe about 45 to 60 minutes. Well, I'm gonna be walking through how to identify other toxins in your environment that are affecting your a thyroid, adrenal, and gut function. They're draining your energy, where toxins in your home are hiding and what you can do about it, and why juicing doesn't work for detoxing and what you can do instead, as well as how to support your body's natural detoxing ability. Like I said earlier, we can't control all of the toxins that are in our environment. It's not realistic for us to ever think that we're never gonna eat out again, but it's just that what matters is recognizing the toxins that are in your environment, doing what you can to minimize them, and then supporting your body's natural detox about, uh, a detoxing ability so that you can create that balance. So I encourage you to join me for this free workshop, The Truth About Toxins and How to Detox Them. Again, that's on March 2nd at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern. You guys can click on the links below to go ahead and register for the workshop. Also find the links as well to some of the favorite brands like the Healthy Human Cup um, and Cast Iron Pots that I mentioned as well. So I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you next Thursday.